Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. I'm here with another match preview video. This one is coming against Crystal Palace. It's coming on Sunday at 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock kickoff, and it's coming from Anfield. So I'm going to go through, like I always do, give you a bit of a preview, give you a score prediction, and then a lineup prediction. And yeah, then you can let me know how I've done. So before I do that, please, if you haven't already, hit a like on the video. Really, really appreciate it when you like the video. And also, most importantly, hit the subscribe button. That's what I'm trying to do right now is build subscribers so I can, you know, make this channel better and, you know, get it out to more people. The more people who see it, the better it is for everybody. So let's get into it. So um, preview. Um, I've just been checking out Palace's form like I always do. And, well... It's not that great, to be honest with you. Um, and again, I said that against Atalanta. I'm still absolutely livid after that performance. That was last night. So, absolutely livid. Um, 14th in the league, Palace are. Um, they've played 13 games since the turn of the year. They've won two. They've drawn four. They've lost seven um, of those 13 games. They came across the, the Premier League and the FA Cup. They did get knocked out... Um, of the FA Cup against Everton um, it took a replay to get them knocked out 4th of Jan was the first game 0-0 um, that was at uh, Selhurst Park that was at um, Crystal Palace's ground and then the return then was the 17th of January obviously at Goodison Park then Everton came away with a 1-0 win the two wins that they've had was the 30th of January 3-2 against Sheffield United. And then the most recent win, you have to go all the way back to the 24th of February. It was a 3-0 uh, win, sorry, against Burnley. So their form is pretty poor. They did um, they played some team as well in an international break, I assume, on the 14th of March. They won that 1-0, but I didn't count that in the stats because it was of no importance. Yeah, they're... I don't believe they're no, they're no longer our bogey team. Um, I think I fully believe Brighton are our bogey team now. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I really don't know how to predict this one because Palace are awful. Well, quite awful. They can always put up a good performance, though. It's not like they play bad. They are organised. But Liverpool, if we play like we did last night, we will not be winning anything else this season. We've... We could very well lose every game if we play like that. Just not good enough. Liverpool were god-awful yesterday. I can't believe it. Um, I don't know what happened. A lot of people are saying it's down to the manager, the choices he made. I seen the lineup and thought, yeah, that's a team that can go and do the job. I'm happy with that team. So I don't think it's necessarily on the starting 11, what Klopp's picked for the starting 11, maybe the substitutions, um, you know, you can blame him for. But, you know, going into that game, I was, yeah, confident, thought we'd do. I thought it would be a tight game. I did, In my prediction, I had 2-0, the Liverpool win. Um, I was expected to be a bit tighter than that. But what happened, what unfolded last night at Anfield is um, unforgivable, really embarrassing and unforgivable. Um, hopefully, in the league now, we'll... Um, really focus and you know bring it home um also there is a second leg we're not we're not out it's only half time isn't it so you know the only thing i will say about that is when we played barcelona that time and we were three nil down after the first leg i was really confident if you ask anybody around me i was confident that liverpool could actually win that i knew it was going to be like we needed four goals but i was actually really confident that that could happen because when we played at the camp new we didn't play bad. We played really well. We just conceded three goals from like a free kick. There was just moments of just pure brilliance. And I knew if it came to Anfield and we played the same, we could very well get the result. We could very well draw it even or maybe get the result. And we did. The only thing is, I do not have that confidence this time around. I really don't think that is going to happen next week, next Thursday. But we shall see. Anyway, I'm here to discuss Crystal Palace. So, with all that said, Liverpool looking poor, Palace looking poor, Liverpool looking poorer if you go off last night's um, performance. Now I'll get into my score prediction. So, 
See, I just don't know what, what to put it at. I'll go with the exact same as what the reverse fixture was. 2-1 to Liverpool. There's going to be some changes, I think, in the lineup. There needs to be, because, well, if he wants to go hard for the Europa League, he'll have to rest players. But if he wants to go hard for the, the Premier League, he'll put out a full lineup. But I should be going for both. Shouldn't be going for one or the other. Should be going for all of them. We've proven over the course of this season that we are good enough. Um to have been in four competitions up until the quarterfinal stage, obviously when we got knocked out against United, it's we're good enough to go and be getting results in all the games. We've done it a few seasons ago, went to all the finals and took it to the last day of the season. Obviously, we didn't go and get the quad. We only won two trophies. But the same can be like, these are good players and they're young and energetic. There's no reason that why they can't go and do it. So I think we should be going for all of it. Um, so I'm predicting I'm predicting some changes, but I'm still predicting a, a strong lineup. So let's get into the lineup. Um, here we go. So what I've gone with Kelleher in goal. Just still not sure about Allison. Seen him in the stands yesterday. Um, just not sure whether he'll be back in time for this or not. Um, we could do with him. I'm not sure Kelleher. Well, Kelleher. Could have done better yesterday, but at the same time, he kept us in the game as well and made a couple of really decent saves. The thing is, he had no protection. He had no protection. You can't really go in on Kelleher without going in on everybody. So I've gone with Kelleher anyway, just because the the uncertainty around Allison. Then as a back four, I've gone with Robertson, Van Dyke, Gomez and Bradley. I think Canate or Van Dyke need to be dropped because the pair of them were shambolic yesterday, and I just don't see it being the captain. So I see it being Canate. Timikas was awful after me saying, you know, I'm quite happy with the way he's played this season. He was, well, he made me look like an idiot, really. So I've gone with Robertson there. Of course, Robertson's just, he just does the job. Do you know what I mean? He just does the job. So Robertson and then Bradley, because again, I would have Trent there. Just uncertain. He was on the bench last night. Didn't come on. But I just I just don't know how it'll be. But if he is there or thereabouts, I do fully see Trent starting. I just haven't heard any news about it or I haven't actually seen the press conference for this game. So anyway, I'll move on into midfield. This is where I made a few changes. Um, Endo was poor last night as well. Yeah, I just can't. I'll just repeat it for everybody. So I'm just, I'll stop saying it. Everybody was poor yesterday. So I I drop Endo, give him a break, and I drop Soboslai. And, well, he didn't... Did he start? No, he didn't start yesterday. Jones started ahead of him. But Jones needs minutes. This is a good game for Jones and Gravenberg to come in, I feel. McAllister's comfortable playing that number six role. Bring McAllister back. Let him control the midfield. And then let Jones and Gravenberg get some minutes and hopefully provide a bit of creativity to the forwards because it's been lacking it has been really lacking nothing came off for Liverpool nothing um, against Atalanta last night and especially and against United as well nothing really came off um, for the, with the forwards wasting the chances so maybe a bit of change in the creative department will help obviously we can't go and change our goal scorers unfortunately um, it's too late in the season for that or it's in the middle of the season so we can't but then, of course, up top, I've gone with Diaz, Nunes, and Salah. Um, of course, Jota came on last night and was probably the best player on the pitch, and he only played 10 minutes. That said, I don't think he'll be rushed back and be put straight forward in this game. I really just don't see that happening. I wouldn't risk it. He might play 45 minutes. He might play 30 minutes. Um, as a substitute, but I just don't see him starting the game and playing the 60 minutes. Um, so, with that said, um, Diaz, Nunes and Salah are probably going to start because realistically they are our best forwards. I mean, actually last night Gakpo was probably, Gakpo was probably my favourite player on the pitch last night. Um, in my eyes, he probably would have got the highest rating if I'd rated them. Um, he was, he just... He was coming deep a lot, so he wasn't always in the right position when it came forward. 
but his build up play, the creativity, everything, anything that looked like something was going to happen, it was going to come through him. And yeah, Diaz was just running around like an ape, really, just doing nothing. Nunes was wasteful. And Salah again, again, wasteful, but also he scored that goal, but I don't know how he's. He's he's running and he's watching the offside line. Like he's got the whole defense in front of him. Why has he not timed his run? So obviously that goal then gets disallowed. So Liverpool do have a mountain to climb next week. But that's the way I would line up. I think it brings in enough change, enough rest for certain players, but also it's strong enough to get the job done against Crystal Palace. That's how I would go. So that lineup in full is Kelleher. Robertson, Van Dijk, Canate, and Bradley. Then in midfield, I've gone with McAllister, Gravenberg, and Jones. And then up top, it is Diaz, Nunes, and Salah. So you guys, let me know how I did. Let me know if you would change anything. Let me know if you've got score predictions. Get them in the comments below. And yes, thanks for watching again. I hope this game is much better than the last one we watched. Um, I've not fully lost hope, but... I'm slowly getting there because I know it's a slippery slope and we've been in this sort of position before. So, again, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, leave a like on the video. Please, more importantly, hit that subscribe button. Every person who subscribes makes all the difference. So I really appreciate you guys who have already done that. Thank you again. And until I see you next, that's actually a point actually on that. I will not be live for this Crystal Palace game. As you can see, I haven't got the advert on the side because I will not be live. I have to drive up to Dublin. And around the time of this game, I'll be driving home from Dublin. So, unfortunately, I won't be live. But, yeah, I will keep you up to date with some content. And, yeah, until next time, up the fucking Reds.